Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Will It VR. This week though I won't be playing a game in VR, I'll simply be showing you how easy it is to set Vorpex up um, and get running in a VR game that you want to explore yourselves. I've had a few people ask on my most recent Red Dead video if I could just maybe make a tutorial or a video whereby I show you how to get this stuff up and running. Um, I haven't done a tutorial before, so bear with me. I am a bit of a waffler. I just kind of talk about random things, um, but I'll try and be as concise and straight to the point as I can be. Okay, so first things first, make sure your VR headset is set up. I know that sounds super simple, but I've got to say it. My VR headset is a basic Oculus. It's the original Oculus Rift. Um, I don't have an S or one of the fancier ones. It's just the basic original Oculus model. Make sure that's all plugged in, set up, ready to go. Your sensors are plugged in. Everything's ready to rock and roll. Once that's done, obviously you need to open up Vorpex. Now, I don't have a link for it here or a shortcut for it here on my homepage, which is a little bit strange because I use it all the time, um, but I just tend to search for it. So, search for Vorpex. There it is. Once you click it, it will start running in the background. So Vorpex is now open. It's open down here. Now Vorpex will sit down there and it will wait for you to launch something that it can hook to. Hooking is the term that they use within the Vorpex community whereby the Vorpex program hooks onto the game or the application that you want to view in VR. And then it lets you do that. It lets you play it in VR. So Vorpex will sit down here quietly rocking and rolling, waiting for you to open something that will work in VR. And then once you do that, if it's if it can attach to it, it will attempt to, and then that's what allows the VR effect. Before doing that though, um, it's best to point out a few things. Now, if you click on it, Vorpex down here, doo -doo 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 -doo, you open up the Vorpex configuration tool. Now in here, um, you can do all sorts of things. Now, I always make a point to come into this before I try and load up and boot up any game. Um, really for one main reason, and that's to check if there's an official profile or a profile that's already been built for that game by someone else um, that's ready to be downloaded and imported to your home PC um, that will allow you to latch onto the game you wanna play. Now, sometimes that's not always the case. Um, when Red Dead Redemption 2 came out, for example, there wasn't a profile that existed. No one had done one yet. Um, there is one now, um, but there wasn't one. So it was a case of just trying to get it to hook without a profile, and that doesn't always work. So let's just say, for example, for argument's sake, I was going to play Borderlands 3 in VR today. Now, I'd open up Warpex down here, head over to Cloud Profiles, which is the profiles that exist online, uh, and I would just check to see whether there is a profile for it. So Borderlands, so cool, there we go. So currently there's a bunch of different Borderlands profiles. Now there's a profile for Borderlands 1, which is an official Vorpex one, which has been downloaded 199 times, uh, and it's been endorsed four times. There's one for Borderlands 2, 697 times, and lo and behold, there's one for Borderlands 3, which has only been downloaded 19 times, insane. Um, once you've found the profile, um, for the game that you want to play, you import it. Click import. Simple as that. So that now exists. Uh, it goes from being existing in the cloud to existing on your home PC. So there we go. So Borderlands 3. Now, I'd already downloaded it because the next video I'm doing is Borderlands 3. Uh, but there it is. Borderlands 3 profile has now been downloaded. Now, because someone's built that profile, it already knows that when you open it, it's going to try and attach to this file. So if you open Borderlands 3 from anywhere on your PC and you have Vorpex installed and you've downloaded the profile, Vorpex already knows that when you launch borderlands3.exe, it will attach that profile to that game, to that to that program. That's kind of how smart Vorpex is. It's, it's super simple. It's just looking for whatever you tell it to look for and it'll attach the profile that you want it to attach to it. Now, if I now opened up Borderlands, it really is as simple as this. If I opened up Borderlands 3 now, Vorpex would attempt to attach to it using that profile. Simple as that. It is a super, super simple system. Now there are things you can do. So um, Red Dead, for example, being a Rockstar game, if there wasn't a profile for Red Dead, which there is, Red Dead Redemption 2, that's an official profile by Vorpex that already attached to it. Now, if there wasn't a profile, and I've not tried this since the game came out, um, but my logic was kind of sound. If there wasn't a profile that existed for, for Red Dead, you could pick something else 
that was built in the same engine. Now, this doesn't always work. Built in the same engine that fundamentally runs the same. And you can basically do this. You could click the profile for Grand Theft 5. And you could create a new profile based on that one. Click that, for example. Um, and let's just call it oh, Red Dead Test. So what that would do is, using the GTA profile for Vorpex, they're very similar games built on the same engines, there or thereabouts. It would use that GTA profile and it can attach it to Red Dead if you tell it to. So you click the create a copy using these uh, settings, call it Red Dead Test. And there it is, so that sits there now, Red Dead Test. And it hasn't been assigned a program. You have to do that manually yourself. So we've built this little test here, which is basically a copy or a clone of the Grand Theft Auto Vorpex profile. And we could click add and we could go and find the Red Dead file. I have no idea where I install stuff. It will be in here somewhere. Steam library, Steam apps. It's not in Steam. Use this as, as an example. You basically come through, you'd find the game that you want to attach to. Let's just say it's Beat Saber. You'd find the exe file and you tell it to attach to that. So I'm going to have to delete this because this is going to be all kinds of wrong. But effectively, right now, I have a clone of the GTA Vorpex profile with all its settings and all its kind of setup that I've told to attach to Beat Saber. Madness, it won't work. It'll be horrible. But you can see how you can create a profile based on something else and tell it to attach to a newer game or a different game. Now, I used that same setup to attach to Outer Worlds. Now, Outer Worlds didn't have a profile uh, when I played it. It might have one now. Outer Worlds, oh, there you go. So Outer Worlds now has an official Vorpex profile. It didn't when I wanted to play it. So I did some internet sleuthing and some people suggested that um, Canarium, which is like a horror game that was free on Epic not that long ago, um, was a good uh, kind of a profile to try and attach to the Outer Worlds. So I built, I copied that and I told it to attach to Outer Worlds. So that was a Canarium profile that I copied I named it Outer Worlds and I told it to attach to Outer Worlds. And that's what allowed me to play on Vorpex in a pretty decent um, profile. I haven't tried Outer Worlds since with the, the official profile. I'm sure that's going to be a little bit nicer, a little bit smoother. But effectively, that then attached to the Outer Worlds. So that's just a couple of examples of how you can get the profile to attach to the game you want. Now, as I said, it is that simple. So on my local profiles, I'll use Red Dead as an example because Red Dead's kind of what I've been playing in VR recently. I already have this profile and that's downloaded to my PC and it knows it needs to attach to Red Dead 2. Now there's a lot of stuff in here um, that I honestly do not understand. If I'm being completely honest with you, I haven't researched it enough. But a lot of it you don't need to. I am, I'm a layman, I'm a basic guy and I enjoy playing stuff in VR. Um, I don't need to understand all this stuff. And I think the more I play with it, the more I will pick up. But a lot of it's fairly straightforward. So use the built-in audio device that's gonna use the Rift headphones. It may enable head tracking, you're gonna want that. Enable head tracking roll, yeah, you're gonna want that. All these kind of things are very basic kind of uh, device setup. On the general page, you can also tell Vorpex which headset you've got. Now, obviously I've got the original Rift, so I always have a set to that. And you don't really need to play with anything else. I've never particularly come in here and started mucking around with other things. Now, over here, alternative hooking method is something that you can tick if you're struggling to get Vorpex to latch onto a game. Now, I've never had to use that. I used it in the first day when I was trying to get it to attach to Red Dead before the Vorpex program had been updated to support DirectX 12. Um, but I honestly have not really come across another use for it. It's very rare that you have to use that. So I don't tend to play around any of this stuff. I tend to use it fairly fairly clean, fairly basic. Um, and if you're quite new to Vorpex and are a little bit kind of uh, maybe scared of jumping in or, or not sure how complicated it is, I assure you, you don't really have to touch this stuff unless you want to get really in depth. You don't really have to play with it. There's a menu when you're inside the game that you can only see uh, when you press space bar, it pops up in front of you. And within that, you can tinker things like the 3D depth, the 3D strength. Um, for some games, the field of view, the style of 3D, and all that stuff you can sit and tinker with while you're in the game world. And you can just tinker and tinker and tinker until it feels comfortable to you. Um, so honestly, within this Vorpex configuration tool, the only things I tend to play around with are the profiles. I just like to make sure I've got a profile on my PC for the game I'm about to play. 
Um, and if I can't find one, I'll, I'll try and do it without and then make my own. But if there's a profile that exists, make sure you download it first and tell it to attach to the file that you're, that you're running. Okay, so once you pick the game you want to play, your Oculus is hooked up or your Vive's hooked up, you've opened up Vorpex and you've found yourself a profile, you've downloaded the profile, you're basically ready to go. It kind of is that simple. Once you've done it, and uh, I won't really need to go through any of this stuff here. If anyone wants to see what all of this stuff here is, I'll happily make another video or show you, but effectively it's basic things like if you're playing the game in uh, there's like a cinema mode, you can choose what the background looks like, what the environment looks like. So I've picked... Let's pick, let's just do Red Dead because Red Dead's, yeah, you know, it's current and I say I like playing it. Um, there we go. I've already got a profile in my local profiles for Red Dead 2 that's going to attach to that. So Vorpex knows what he needs to look for now. So applying close. So now Vorpex will sit down there. Don't have to do anything else with it. It's just going to sit down there and wait for me to, to boot up the game. Okay, so now that you've got your Vorpex profile uh, selected um, and set up and you've done all the things I just showed you to do, You'll have Vorpex running down here in the bottom, as I said. Now it's just time to load up the game. Now I'll show you how easy it is uh, to get Vorpex to attach. It really is as simple as just running the game and Vorpex will do the rest of the legwork for you. What I am gonna do though is a bit of a double whammy. A few people have asked about Red Dead 2 and getting the mods, um, the field of view mod to work and, and kind of how I get my setup the way I want it. So I'll show you that at the same time. Um, Obviously, first and foremost, uh, I must say again, and I said this in my last video, this is a mod, um, so please be careful when using it. You don't have to change the parameters of the game itself, but it's an application that runs alongside the game. And I wouldn't want anyone to get banned because of using it. There's nothing like that out there at the moment. No one's reported getting banned, but just be careful with the way you use it. I really wouldn't want anyone to get banned and then that come back on me and I get in trouble for, for ruining your experience. But anyway, I'll show you how to use that and how that works um, and how I use it and how I kind of tune it to get the experience that I want. So if you've done the Vorpex setup, like I just showed you and you picked the profile, all you need to do is load up your game. Now, obviously, in this instance, we're going to play Red Dead 2. Um, so I'm just going to load that now and you'll see what happens. OK, so when you press play, if everything's worked the way it should have worked and Vorpex is running down here in the bottom corner. You should get a little pop-up that tells you that Vorpex is attaching itself to the game. There you go. So attaching to reddead2.exe. You'll see that every time Vorpex tries to hook itself to a game. Um, it's, it's fairly straightforward, but you, if you see that, you know it's working. Um, the other telltale sign is, and I don't think you'll be able to see it, but it says Vorpex at the bottom um, of the screen. So I've got Red Dead running in windowed mode. And I'll tell you why that's quite important in a minute. But at the bottom of the screen, if it works, you should see Vorpex down on the very, very bottom of, on the window of the game. And obviously you'll be able to see it through your headset as well, which I can. So that's really kind of how easy it is to get Vorpex to hook onto a game. It's not always that easy. There are some games that just it will not hook to for one reason or another. But when it does work, it is that simple. And it literally just attaches and then you're in. So right now, if I flip the headset on, there I am. I can look around. Um, I'm not in full VR mode because I'm on edge peak. There we go. So I can completely control where I look. Um, it's in full, not full 3D, but it's in um, adaptive 3D, which is it's Z normal or Z adaptive. They're not full true 3D representations, but for these kind of big expansive open world games, they work pretty well. You can change the 3D strength. It's a real shame I can't capture the menu on screen and show you what the Vorpex menus are like because they're very, very basic and they're very intuitive. Um, I say they allow you to change the depth of the 3D, how far away things are, near versus far, uh, depth of field, the head tracking sensitivity, uh, etc., etc. But it's all things that you can fine tune yourself until it's comfortable to you. Um, VR is obviously a very kind of personal and intimate way of gaming um, and it's different for everybody and everyone likes to tailor it to, to suit what's comfortable for them. So the menus within Vorpex allow you to do that and you access them by just pressing spacebar. So now there's no menu for me, now there's a menu. Really is that simple. Okay, so the reason I asked or told you to open the game in um, windowed mode is because of this. So if you want to run the field of view mod, um, it's pretty imperative to be running the game in windowed mode purely because when you alt tab to try and move around if you're in full screen red dead does this thing where it's kind of fighting against you and it all starts to flicker a lot of people have reported this it might be fixed in patches and things um, but currently 
if you try and play it in full screen and then come back to your desktop, it, it, it does not like it, it has a bad time. But if you're in window mode, it allows you to come back to the desktop and you can still browse around. Now, once you've got the game running and you've got it hooked in VR, if you download the field of view mod, which I'll give you the link for, I'll drop it on the video, I'll stick it on there now. Um, find it wherever you've put it. I've just got mine on the desktop. So there is Red Dead 2 display mods, nice and easy. And just open it, because I say it's an application that runs alongside the game. Okay, so when that opens, uh, you should be able to see that now. So I've got this little, this is just tiny little box now. So this is the mod, it's that simple. Once the mod's running, you've got a few different kind of options. You've got, it's very basic, but you can remove the black bars. So when you're in uh, the cinematics of the game, you can remove the borders that kind of make it look like a movie. Very cool, not something I've played with. But the real thing that everyone's here for is the custom field of view. So once you're in, the game's running and you've got the mod running, hit F3 and then it's ready. Uh, so once you've hit F3, it's ready for you to toggle the field of view up or down. So I'm just on the basic, kind of the maximum the game allows me. So if I start pressing F8, you'll see that bit by bit, the field of view is getting wider and wider. Now you can you can tap as much as you want. You can really pump this up, but you don't want to go too far because it starts to get a bit weird. The world like bows around you and it's not very comfortable. It's just about finding what's comfortable for you. Now, literally you can do that and then just click back on the game, jump back in and just test it. Now, the way I tend to test it is I'll get my gun out um, and I'll kind of look at how much I can see of the character's hand, uh, wrist, and, and the gun animations. That's kind of how I've taught myself to, to learn whether the field of view is right. To me, that looks pretty good, but I can always afford to go a little bit more. So once again, tag, tab back to the mod. Let's increase it a little bit more, shall we? Let's push it until I can see his wrist starting to appear here on the screen. Okay, there we go. All right, tab back into the game. That's more like it. Okay, so now I really, yeah, I can see all of his wrist. I can see his kind of his detailing on his on his cuff of his uh, jacket there. I can see his hand and his gun. And that is a little bit, well, it's a lot more like what I'd actually be seeing with my own two eyes. Um, that's kind of all there is to it. Now, if you've gone too far, the mod's as simple as, again, tab back to the mod and you can drop it back a little bit. F7 will pull it back a little bit. It really is that simple. The mod does say make sure to have launched the game first. I've not tried to do it where I load the mod and then the game. I always load the game, get the VR working and then load the mod, um, which is why the windowed mode is really important as well, because if you try and tab back to open the mod and you've got it in full screen, it will do that flickering, flashing black screen thing. And it's almost impossible to find anything and navigate your PC. Um, so yeah, just make sure you get the game running in VR first, windowed mode then open the mod. Now while we're here, I will point something out because I noticed it when I was testing this just a minute ago. If you've watched any of my other videos about Red Dead in... Wow, this thunderstorm was amazing. I've not really played it much to see the different types of weather. Ooh. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos about Red Dead, one thing I constantly pointed out when I was playing it was what I called like a screen judder. Oh, the lightning looks cool. I'm getting so distracted. Jesus. Um, there's a, like a judder when you move your head, when you're moving in the VR headset. Now, if you move on the controller, you don't get that judder. And if you move using the mouse, you don't get that judder. Now, I'm happy to report that as of today playing this, that judder is gone. It is completely and utterly gone. So... This now, that is smooth as butter. Um, this now is probably the nicest, uh, most playable version of Red Dead in VR that I've seen to date. And this is just due to updates to Vorpex. They're always updating the software, literally always updating it uh, and just making tweaks and changing the way it works. The uh, DirectX 12 compatibility, for example, only came out when Red Dead did so. They've had a few weeks now to kind of refine it. And yeah, that judder is gone. That is smooth as you like. 
it is uh, yeah, every time I come and play this in VR it blows me away it is just the coolest thing I find something new every time don't know what that was tried to kill it um, but yeah honestly I've had a few people ask me on the video kind of can you just show me the setup of getting this working and it really is that simple one thing I'll do as well for you is I'll put my uh, PC specs up on the screen I might just drop them in intermittently throughout the video just to show you what kind of oh my god have I just drowned my horse I might have drowned the horse. Come on, we can get out of this. I believe in you. Oh no, maybe maybe this is it. Maybe this is the end. It's like that scene from Never Ending Story. Oh no. I'm going to leave you there. I'm sorry, mate. There's no saving you. Um, I'll put my PC specs up on the screen um, intermittently throughout the video, just so you can see what kind of um, rig I'm running. And you can kind of benchmark it yourself. I'm running it on ultra settings. <coughs> um because my PC kind of can push that. I did get a little bit of uh, kind of a, ooh, ah. I did get some kind of issues with um, frame rate when I first started playing it, but I've tweaked it a bit now and I can get it back up to ultra settings. Um, but honestly, the key to Vorpex, if you're new or if you're kind of a returning, um, returning player, or if you're someone that's got years and years of experience, I think you'll agree, it, it's all about tweaking it. It's all about using the built-in settings and trying out different profiles until it's comfortable for you. Um, what's comfortable for me might be completely different for you. Again, I've said this before, but I've got quite a strong VR stomach. Um, God, this is beautiful now about the screen judder. Honestly, this is actually basically perfect. Um, yeah, what works for me might not necessarily work for you. So just sit in it, press space bar, get the Vorpex menu up and just play around with the settings until you are happy with how it feels. Use that field of view mod if you feel like you need to. I think it increases the experience tenfold um, and just adjust it until it's comfortable and just honestly, just play with it. Just play with it until you're happy with how... Where's the guy gone? Oh, he died. I was going to turn around and shoot him, but he, he did the dying for me. Um, just keep twiddling with it. Until you're happy with how it feels. Take that. Is it um, sorry, I'm really bad at making these videos on this because I do get so distracted by playing the game. Um, yeah, just just play around with it and make it get it to the point where you are comfortable with it, and I assure you it will be worth the money. Uh, also, good news, I went and checked how much Warbex costs, so I can actually give you an accurate price. Uh, in British pounds, it currently costs thirty-three pounds and I think ninety-five pence. It's so like thirty-four quid. Um, and I think it is worth every single penny of that money. Just for Red Dead alone. Um, if you get it running the way I've got it running now, and if you follow my little steps and you tend to do everything I, I did in the video, then you will get it running this way. Obviously you might change the graphical settings depending on your PC, um, but if you follow the steps, you'll, you'll get it running. And as I say, with the updates, it's now silky, silky smooth. So yeah, really, really exciting. Um, isn't that big city in this way? kind of the big main town I remember going across these bridges to get there but I can't Let's see if I can get there before the end of the video I'm happy to do this kind of thing if people comment saying can you show me a tutorial then I'm happy to just kind of make one um, I'm, I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone making a tutorial video but uh, hopefully I've been kind of oh, I'm gonna fit through there kind of accurate and concise enough to get the point across and show you how it all works Warbucks is incredibly simple uh, as I said at the start of the video, I'm, I'm not like a computer genius. Um, these guys make this very, very easy to use. And you don't have to have that kind of knowledge of PCs and components and the way things run just to get it to work. So anyone can grab this, jump in and play. Uh, and that's that's probably one of the best things about Vorpex. Uh, is this the big town? Is this the big... I think it is. I haven't been here on the PC. Oh. Oh yeah, that looks really cool. Let's go down the town and shoot everyone and then I'll call it a day because that's kind of what I do when I make these videos. I just run around and get bored and go, hey dude, oh, I missed you. Oh no, everyone's got a gun here. Oh god, I hit it right in the head. This is it, this is, this is the rampage to end all rampages. They can't catch me. I'm on a horse. Have that. 
Oh, hello. That was giving me auto aim. I haven't played it with the. Kind of like the lock. <laughs> Before. <laughs> oh, this is very fun. <laughs> hello there, sir. Doing your running. Up to. Get down here. Get down here, get down here. Come on, Black Beauty. We can do this. We can escape. I don't know how many cops are after me. If any. Oh, they're everywhere! Uh oh. oh. And then he died. A miserable death. Ooh. So that's basically how you get Red Dead running and then how you go on a spree and kill yourself. Um, typical. <laughs> okay, I'll jump out of that now. And I'll just do some summarizing. Shut that down. Cool. So it really is that simple. Um, purchase Vorpex. Open Vorpex up. It goes down here. Open up the configuration tool. Make sure you've got a profile selected. If there's a profile online, search for the profile. Download the profile. And then just load the game up. It's as simple as that. And if it's specifically Red Dead you want to play, make sure you download the mod tool, which again, I will uh, chuck a link to on the screen. Please use it at your own risk. Um, and then you just open that after you've opened the game. Voila, change the, the field of view to your comfort and, and, and play to your heart's content. Honestly, it runs fantastically in VR. I've been banging on about it for a little while now. I've got a couple of videos up, but it's, it's just great. It's an experience everyone should have, especially if you love Red Dead. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. Um, hopefully this has been useful, um, even a little bit useful. I uh, see some people did ask for this video or just asked for a tutorial about how Vorpex works in general. Um, so I thought I'd try and throw something together for you. Hopefully I've answered some questions you had and hopefully I've kind of made you realize that Vorpex is a worthy investment and it's very easy to use, um, even if you don't have a huge amount of computer knowledge. Um, because honestly, I don't and it is just crazy easy to use. Hopefully you could see that in the video. Um, yeah, if there's anything else you want me to show you, I'll happily try and put something together. Uh, the next Wallet VR video I'll be doing will probably be Borderlands 3. I'm working quite a lot at the moment, but I'll try and get it out this week. I haven't tested it fully yet. I've just downloaded the profile, but that is the next one on my agenda. And then after that, I'm happy for suggestions. Throw them my way and I will play whatever I can. I've got a bunch of games on Steam. I'm happy to keep trying things out. I love using Vorpex and I love making these videos. So just keep chucking over some suggestions. For now though, guys, I'm going to go and play some games. It's like 10 o'clock. I've got work tomorrow and I need to squeeze in some Pokemon because I've been playing a lot of Pokemon, uh, as you might have seen. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was really useful to you and I'll see you again next time. Take care of yourselves, guys. See you later.